Hey, Randy Joe here, and welcome to the first episode of uh, Metal March. Every month this year, we have been participating and listening to a different uh, genre throughout the month, every video being a first reaction to a different album within the genre. And this month for March, we are doing metal, quite a stylistic uh, change from last month, which was folk music during folk February. But here we are again, like I said, with Metal March. I am quite the novice when it comes to metal. I'm not too familiar with most metal music. Music. In fact, uh, the amount of metal albums I know could probably be counted on, on just both my hands, probably less than 10, to be quite honest. I'll throw up a little sheet here showing all the ones that I can think of. Yeah, not too familiar with metal. Never listened to a Metallica album, even. Not straight front to back, at least. So today, we are going to listen to uh, their infamous, sometimes most critically acclaimed work, sometimes referred to as their best by the fans, Master of Puppets. And even though I'm wearing this Metallica shirt, I am a bit of a poser. Uh, I, I'm only familiar with the hits. So again, this is all fresh, all first listens. Take what it is with a grain of salt. My first reactions are not final reactions. These are not my final thoughts, of course. So again, take that into consideration that if I have some sort of gripe or I do not personally enjoy a song as much as another, it really just comes down to the fact that it's my first time hearing it. It takes some time to digest things, right? But without further ado, this is Master of Puppets, and it has eight songs, 54 minutes, some of these being quite lengthy, uh, but let's, let's not waste any more time. This is Battery. I like this guitar opening. Feels nice to transition from folk February, very guitar-based genre, to this track opening up with a nice gentle guitar progression. All right, there it is. Very anthemic opening, kicking this thing off. Very punchy. Oh boy, oh boy, it's like giving me whiplash after how gentle last month was. Classic uh, chanting vocals. That's part of the meta genre. Oh, really like that electrifying riff there. Such an iconic voice as well. Certainly stands out. God, the drumming. I'm always mystified uh, and just like amazed by how incredible drummers are within the metal scene. Um, the same with jazz drummers; they're, they're also on another level. But they're just the constant up tempo, just barrage of sounds that they have to constantly maintain. Cannot imagine the skill. Oh, I like this part. This rhythm. It's got like a slower tone to it. Almost like we're ramping up. Oh. God, it's so ear piercingly, you know, cacophony of sounds. I, the the guitar player obviously giving it his all here. I believe that being the uh, the vocalist as well, James Hetfield. But I gotta say, the drummer. I'm a big sucker for drummers, is, is like just really sticking in my ear here. He's just riding that drum out. I love it. Just like how rapid, rapid that is. Just about the drive of man, maybe? The drive of the band? I'm not too sure. But what a kickoff. What a powerful opening track that was. Uh, now we're going into the title track, Master of Puppets. Of course, I've heard this one. Who hasn't? 810 million streams it is I think one of if not their most popular song in fact uh, according to this it is their third most popular track after Enter Sandman uh, and nothing else matters but 810 million streams is nothing to uh, sneeze at nothing to laugh at here let's just go right into it eight minutes roll oh. and that iconic opening I've who has not heard this really maybe it's because I've grown up playing video games but Really just throws me back to those early Doom Wolfenstein days. Has that retro vibe to it. That uh, a lot of modern metal, from what I've heard, doesn't seem to carry. Very vintage sound. The funny thing about metal is it's such a, I guess, edgy sort of genre. A lot of people view it as, but uh, performance-wise, vocally, they're so theatrical. It's such a like melodramatic theatrical performance by most singers within the metal genre from what I've heard. 
uh, and Metallica, certainly no exception to the rule, James Hetfield, very theatrical, I find, in his vocals and performance. Like that arena rock tone, but again, definitely more advanced than just your basic arena rock. And, oh, iconic chorus. I really love, like, the reverby, echoey vocals, too, that are utilized here in the chorus. Such a, like, punchy, in a vacuum chorus, too. The way it kind of, like, pulls back the, the rest of the instrumental. Oh, I don't remember this. Oh. Oh, I, do, I don't remember this at all. I guess I've never heard the song in full. Oh, what a, like, beautiful detour this is taking. Oh, I love that passage. It was so beautiful. A nice step away from the just, like, suffocating chorus and, and track that it's been so far. Oh, oh, I love that deeper regimen it's digging into here. It's so, like, hellish. Oh, I love those vocals. Like the raspiness there in the background. Oh my goodness. An ex electrifying performance here on the guitar. There's like a jolt of energy. Oh, I love this riff here so much. Like I said, that vintage tone really just connects with me. Amazing pacing in this track too. I think the stylistic switch ups that occur within it certainly aid uh, in making the eight and a half minute track feel more compact. What a track. A classic for a reason. Let's just go right into the next one. The Thing That Should Not Be. Never heard uh, the rest of these tracks as far as I know. I love like the very deep tone that uh, this one has. Very dark, kind of hellish tone to it. Very sludgy tone to it. I like it. I like it a lot so far. I do find it tends to meander a little bit so far. Hoping for a nice build up or switch up. Oh. That's what I'm waiting for, something like this. Certainly reinvigorates the track, because I thought it was uh, meandering quite a little bit there. Oh, I love how in the background you can hear this, like, almost like twisted, slowly rising guitar. But it's buried deep within the mix. Probably of the... Th you know, three tracks I've heard so far. This is the one that is not uh, clicking with me as quickly as the other two. Pretty sure this has to be about Cthulhu, given the themes of the sea, you know, losing your, your insanity. Phrases like madness as well, where uh, uh, the title of the, the short story, I think, Madness Over Innsmouth or something like that. I think that one is a Cthulhu-inspired track. Which, certainly a nice thematic, uh, you know, piece to it, but was a bit of a slower build and uh, might be more of a grower. But here's Welcome Home Sanitarium. That last track, not as instantly gratifying as the first two, but I think, again, will grow on me. I know some metal fans uh, don't consider Metallica the best representation of metal, given their more mainstream appeal. But, uh, I don't know. They certainly deserve the praise. It's about a, um, ooh, insane asylum patient. Oh. Oh, I'm loving this chorus and those, the riffs.
what a beautiful instrumental passage. Like I said, James Hetfield, uh, I believe he's the one on the guitar here. He is certainly killing it when he takes the stage in terms of guitar work. Lots of uh, themes of almost like mental health and insanity in the album. Really just trapped within themselves. I really like the way um, he performs his chorus here because, you know, with the word like sanitarium, he could definitely pitch it up. And I think the expectation is that he's going to sing it in a higher regiment, but then he drops it down. Nice subvert of expectations, I think. Um, and the, the instrumental matches it. I think the, the uh, insane asylum patients are breaking out. Is that what I'm gathering here? Maybe the phrase mutiny here is making my brain go, but I would love to see them do a track that uh, is focused on like nautical themes, like oceanic themes. Do they have that? Or any metal album recommendations down below that have to do with uh, the, the themes of the sea? It would be quite interesting. I really like this one. I like it more than the last track. I really like that one. I thought that one was quite fantastic, actually. I like the themes. I like the overall progression of it. And uh, quite electrifying. Next, we're going into Disposable Heroes. Eight minutes long. Another epic track. Let's see how this one blows. Oh. I really love that, like, kind of start and stop element to this one. Good rhythm of repetition. Man, the drummer on this. He has such a great sense of just, like, rhythm, and he does such a great job providing a, a nice backbone to the track. He's there putting the thrash and thrash metal there. This incredibly high octane, fast paced instrumental here. Kill them all. I think it's a reference to their uh, their their debut album. Track about uh, some sort of war hero. Um, a common theme throughout their music. I know the track "One" by them also kind of details a, uh, a vet. Uh, quite a brutal track as well. They they certainly like their their war epics. Track from the uh, perspective of the the drill sergeant, I would believe here. Um, which, if you're a fan of that kind of topic, check out Black Mini's album Hellfire. The track on there, Welcome to Hell, is uh, kind of similar in tone. Uh, very great prog rock track uh, from the perspective of a drill sergeant uh, belittling one of his his soldiers. But uh, sorry, just making the connection. Really loving this chorus and just overall execution of this track. Oh. Great bridge. Nice inner monologue. Really capturing the hellscape that is war. I really love the, the chant aspect. I know that's a typical metal trend but it never loses its its gumption what a brutal like just chorus here I guess you'd say or a passage tells you like the whole life story of this soldier I think this is one of the best tracks on the, the album so far if I'm being completely honest with you one of my favorites so far. Oh my god, it's still going. I thought that was it. A fake out. Wow. What a track. What a mammoth of a track. Eight minutes long. Uh, that might be one of, if not my favorite, on the album. Obviously, you know, you've got the classics like Master of Puppets. And I thought Welcome Home Sanitarium was fantastic. But Disposable Heroes, oh, perfect start to finish. Uh, eight minutes long, did not feel like it. Not much more to say about it other than I loved it. Loved the themes, loved the delivery. 
loved how much it encapsulated this soldier's life uh, and told you so much with even just such short verses. Uh, great track. Leper Messiah is this one. Great track back to back to back here. Very punchy, this one is so far. Not as uh, rattling. Ooh. I really like the um, the bass player as well. Maybe I'm kind of missing those bass lines, but the, this one on here is really sticking out to me. This is a uh, cons criticism of religion. I do like the very catchy chorus that uh, this track and all the other tracks have, but I do find this one might not be, again, connecting with me as instantly as some of these other tracks here. Oh, I really like this part here. It almost feels like um, that rising and cascading guitar work is like a staircase of sound. Love it. Here's that rattling drum I was waiting for. I really like the swirling tone to this this guitar work too. Here's me here that makes it kind of muffled there. Not sure how I feel about that. Is that intentional? That or all this uh, loud barrage of sound is just getting to my ears maybe. See I really like this punchy section here that opens and closes up the track. But uh, overall I think it's got to grow on me a little bit more. And next we're going right into Orion. Let's not waste any time. Eight and a half minutes. Another epic. There's no lyric page for this one, which is a little strange. Is this going to be an instrumental only track? I'd be a little shocked, but I do like the way this is opening up. Oh, I just love this very sinister tone. The slow build. This one really just showcasing the, the strengths of the chemistry of the band, I believe. Really great performances all around, but a shocking, you know, concept I find to, to leave out James Hetfield as the vocalist and not have the vocalist at all, I did not expect. But I do think maybe I would prefer this in the middle of the album to kind of serve as a, a bridge or a break. But that's just me being nitpicky. I'm still enjoying this this tone. I'm liking this part here too a lot. It's a nice change in, in pace and momentum on the album. I'm loving this part here. This whole section here. Really great melodies on this one. It's so like melodic and and beautiful. And it doesn't have uh, that overwhelming darkness that a lot of the tracks here have. Very ethereal almost. Man, so many different switch ups too. It's almost like you got three or four tracks in one here. The slow fade out. As if the band never stopped playing. Uh, pretty much said everything I had to say during it, but I gotta say, I really love this track. Might have preferred it as either a closer or a mid-break, but that's me being picky. Other than that, the track itself, pretty great. Love the switch-ups, love the melodies and the rhythms throughout. One of the most enjoyable and relaxing moments on the album so far. Uh, Damage Inc. closing things out. Pretty, like, massive uh, and epic sounding album so far. I've got to say. Which I guess I should expect it, but I like that uh, that opening minute there, very eerie. And right then we just get bashed over the head. Really has that, like I said, vintage '80s production style. Uh, that, in my opinion, can really make or break an album because it'll either 
really date it terribly or will really make it stand the test of time as, as a product of its time in a positive way. And I think this is a more positive, uh, you know, subject here. I think that production style works best with metal music of the time. Eerie Whisper. The thing about Thrash Metal is that I love the, the way every member feels like they're trying to outrun one another. Even the vocalist here. Oh, look like his gross, guttural, kind of raspy tone he had there. We're already four minutes in almost. Despite being 54 minutes, I think thrash metal albums, or just maybe metal albums in general, really have a sense of uh, great pacing because of the rapidness of them. But uh, 54 minutes, it did not feel like it. And I think it's because it's just a constant onslaught of sounds. And there it is, that closes out the album. Uh, very fast paced, very electrifying. 54 minutes does fly by, I think, given the very thrashy, high octane energy. Really makes the pacing feel that much quicker. Uh, but I gotta say, other than The Thing That Should Not Be and Leper Messiah, the two tracks that I think will be something that'll grow on me more as I listen, the rest of the tracks were much more instant gratifying, much more, you know, just. Those, those really powerful choruses that are super catchy, as well as uh, constant stylistic switch-ups, really make this thing uh, just an epic undertaking overall. Um, I thought Battery was an okay opener, but of course you got Master of Puppets, a classic. Welcome Home Sanitarium I thought was really great thematically and instrumentally. Disposable Hero is probably my favorite overall, uh, which I guess a little shocking considering it doesn't have the highest streams here. Um, and Orion, a great instrumental al or track, I should say, uh, eight and a half minutes that was probably the most melodic of all the tracks here. It had a slower tone as well. Nice little bridge, I guess, between the uh, third, last, and last track. But might have preferred it, again, like I said, in the middle of the LP to sort of break things up. But a little nitpicky of mine there. Loved Master of Puppets. Thought it was great. You can see why it is considered a classic. And I'm sure with more listens, it'll... It'll climb up the ranks for me uh, in terms of overall album rankings. For now, I think it is just an absolute must-listen for the metal genre. And uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for, for the first video of Metal March. And if you have a metal album you'd like to recommend, go ahead and leave it down below. Uh, recommend anything you want. could be a hidden gem or a super popular, mega popular album. Go ahead, because I am quite a novice when it comes to metal music. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, a short list I'll throw up on screen. That's pretty much all I think I can name off the top of my head. Um, and I don't even know if you consider these two in the back, you know, the most hardcore metal albums. I know the metal fan base can be a little bit more specific with their sound. So, again, quite unfamiliar myself. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to follow along in listening alongside metal albums. Uh, alongside myself. And, as always, my name is Randy Joe, and I'm signing off.